how I make the seed rising mix. So if you come have a look at this, Alex. So I've got a mix here of 25% of perlite. All right. Underneath we have sand mixed with um, river sand, washed river sand, which with a, a turf unlay mix. Also 25%, 25%. And with that, we're going to add some um, peat. What we have here. So we put 25% of peat in there as well. And that was my seed raising mix, Alex. Right. 25% mm -hmm. of turf underlayer. Yeah. That's a nice uh, dark, um, say, potted, fine potting mix. Uh, that will do as well. Then you get this nice mix here. I'll show you. Got the mix done here. See. Nice loose mix, so the roots can shoot down nicely into this mix, and um, the perlite will keep the moisture in, into the mix, and the sand will hold it a bit together, as you can see. Beautiful. So um, yeah, that's going to come up really good. Nice light seed raising mix that will do really well for the seedlings. Hey Alex, good morning. Good morning, uh, mate. Well, okay, we did the seed raising mix, now we have to prepare the seeds. So what I'm going to do, Alex, I'm going to use this uh, baby bottle solution that has a bit of chlorine in it, and that is for uh, sterilizing the seeds. So what I'll do, I'll put that in and let the seeds soak for about five minutes in it. Then I will strain them through a sieve, dry them, and then is when I use for planting them. So that will, this will help the prevention of early fungus attacks on the, on the little seedlings as they shoot up. Ah. So uh, it's not 100%, you still might get some with a little bit of fungus, but it helps a lot. So uh, yeah, so this for prevention of fungus is in, at a very early stage. Wow, so basically you're using baby... Uh, yeah, but the, the sterilized baby balls with this, Alex. Yeah. Wow, and, and, and that's the trick. That's the trick. That's preventing little fungus attacks in from when at early stage. Oh, thanks for that, Mike. No worries. Put it really on there idea. too. Okay, let everybody know this is how we do it. Yeah. Okay, over and out. Over and out. Here we go. I only do one seed per tube, as I don't believe in putting two or three together and then break them up later because you'll damage the roots. Right, so now what I do, the same mix, put it very thin on the top instead of oh. poking little holes and putting them in and covering them up. I'll cover them up like this because it goes heaps quicker. <laughs> okay, I was thinking, yeah, how are you going to put them under, under the soil? I thought yeah, well, in the, in the beginning, Alex, I used to use a satay stick and push them in. Yeah. And then, you know, just press down. But as you can see, I only put like a little bit of dirt on the top, a little bit of seed raising mix on the top. Mm -hmm. Is same mix as we used outside to fill up the trays. Exactly yeah. the same, Alex. Mm. And um, so that way they don't sit too deep. If you plant, you put the seeds a little bit too deep, uh, they might not want to shoot up. Too hard for them. Then what we do, Alex, we just push it down a little bit. Not too hard, not too tight. That's that. Bit of moisturizer, eh? Any moisturizer? Yeah, just water. Uh, no, no secret mix there. Yeah, just a bit of water. Just to make it nice and damp. Not wet, but just damp. And then we'll put them on the heat. Heat mat, Alex. Okay. Okay, I'll show you over there. So, I put them on the heat blanket. Then I put plastic over it. Over it. And then I will put rubber mats on the top to keep the heat in nicely mm. and to keep the moist in. As you can see, the moist is staying in there nicely like that. I'll leave them like this for four to five days and then I will start to check, see if any are sprouting. As soon as they start to sprout, Alex, I'll take all these off and then I will show you what I do after that. Okay. But let me show you the setup of the heat blanket. Here, have a look. Uh, so I've got my heat blanket here. Underneath the heat blanket, I've got a rubber mat. Mm -hmm. To keep the heat in, yeah. heat blanket on top, yeah. plastic on top of that. Then the seedling trays go on top of that with the glad wrap and the rubber mats on top of that again. Okay. 
So it's um, quite easy and the heat mass is good because it keeps it at 28 degrees constantly. So the secret for germinating chili seeds is... Especially the, the hotter varieties as they, you know, a bit harder to germinate. I like to keep them exactly on 28 degrees as uh, I have a much better uh, germination rate that way. Mm. So we, we have over 80, 88% normally. Okay, so good. What is not the highest, obviously, but you know, it's not like growing Cayennes. Cayennes are very easy, but this one's, uh, yeah, have a little bit more character, as we say. And the plastic is just to protect the. Um... Yeah, that's for when I spray and when I put water over when I get bigger, that the, the heat mat doesn't get wet. Okay, yeah. yeah you know, that makes so, sense uh, too. Yeah. Yep, so the water just runs off, any excess water runs off. Almost early spring, so. Yeah, look, some people start them in June already, but I'll find I'd rather have them growing up. Till about you know uh, four or five inches high, about ten centimeters, with eight uh, good adult leaves, mm -hmm. and then I'll go straight outside. I will harden them off in the hothouse first, yeah, and then I can plant them straight outside. And okay. then we'll be planting half October, the end of October, depending on the weather. So basically, if you start uh, end of winter, early spring with seeding up, yeah, you got plenty of time. Yes, yes. Obviously, you know, if you live in the colder climates, like say in Tessie or Melbourne, mm -hmm. it's better if you wait a, long, a little bit longer or leave the seedlings inside in a warm, warm uh, area, ah. because obviously the nights are still very cold there. Yeah, you know, yes. I like to. We won't be planting them outside till the ground temperature has reached 12 degrees minimum. Mm. All right. See, there's all good information because we get a yeah. lot of questions about this. Yeah, so I like half October, end of October because we won't have any guaranteed no more frost overnight. As so you still can get frost here late in the year. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to risk that. If you plant them outside and you get a cold snap, they all get the stressed and stunted. Yeah, yeah. you never so get the, you never get the crop out of it, eh? We'll n never be a good plant again if they no. if they get st stressed and stunted in the beginning. So yeah, you just I just want to work with really good, good quality stock. Okay. All right. Thanks, mate. Hurry, hurry. So, how many seedlings will you have on this on these tables here? Four and a half thousand, Alex. Four and a half thousand. Yes. Four and a half thousand tubes, I have. Yeah. It's like you're starting a farm, mate. Quite a few. I have scorpions. I have the Budgelokia, yellow seven pods, the chocolate habaneros, all different ones. A few secret ones, as you might know, that we have been working on with the mm -hmm. scientists for mm -hmm. the last two years now. And uh, hopefully we'll get fairly successful. The, the first test last year looked very good. So we're not going to say anything, eh? No, I'll wait with that, eh? Yeah. So, um, yeah, the test looked very good. So we see we're having a, a nice dry summer coming up by the look of it. So we'll see what... So I cut plastic corners from corner strips. Yeah. Just cut all the corners off and stuck them in like this. This will do the job perfectly. Absolutely. Looks good. So this can stay for you know, quite some time. So most of the ceilings are up. Once most of the ceilings are up, I'll take the plastic off uh, so they can um, grow nicely in here. We have the lights in here. So we get them up and going until they have at least four to six leaves, Alex. True leaves, as we call it. Yeah. As the first two are not the real ones. And then anyway, so, and after that, we'll again put them in the hot house. The, the night temperature will be a bit warmer then too, in, in three, four weeks. As it is, like this morning was only like two degrees here. So it's early spring. Yeah, but you know, it's all about the, the, the ground temperature and how cold it is. Like yeah. two degrees in the morning is not good for seedlings. No. So we'll just leave them in here where it's nice and warm. They're all on the heat blankets. So we'll keep it on constant 28. And they're loving it. Yeah, I have to see that. I do the feel so. The shooting up now. It's really good. Hey, mate, you were saying about popping up? Yeah, there's quite a few chilies coming up there now. The seedlings. Look over there. There, 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 they're everywhere coming up now. A few more days and most of them will be up. This is only day five or six for some of them. Right. This one, this one's on day five. And then over there, they, they're going on a little bit later, a couple of days later. So it will take a couple more days for them to come up. But as you can see, there's quite a few here. They're all coming up. Great. Looks awesome. Yeah, it's good to see they germinating well by the look of it. Okay, easy. You get a drop sheet and just stick it over on the top. <coughs> yeah, it shall be light. There we go, Alex. Now we've got some lights on the ceilings. That will help the growth of the young seedling. As you can see, most of them actually have come up already here. 
there might be a couple missing, two or three missing in the whole tray. There's 40, 40 in a tray, so two or three. That's over a 90% hit rate. Yeah. You know, so it's it's not too bad at all, actually. So I'm very happy with the germination rate. So that's all good. So that means we have good good fresh seeds, Alex. So basically, when you look at the at the seedlings, if there's this high or this tall, they can go into then, the hot house. They yeah. don't need the heat blankets anymore. No, that should be fine from that one. Okay. Um, so they're a couple of centimeters high, like two centimeters high, so yeah. an inch. But you know, like they're, they're already six, seven, eight days old. So yes, yeah, so you can see they're still starting to form the real leaves. Yeah. Over here, it's just starting there. So yeah, now they'd be fine. So Alex, they will, they will stay in these tubes till they're actually ready for planting. Uh, as you can see, they're cut nice deep tubes, big tubes. Yeah. So um, till about. Oh, I suppose they're about this high, have about six to eight good leaves, big leaves on them, and they will go in straight into the pots outside, Alex. Mm. So yeah, it will be very good. As you see, most of them actually have shot up, so it's really good. So they're looking good, they're, looking they're healthy, good. Yeah. so they should be fine. They're looking very healthy, just in the hothouse, on the table. And you're... Yeah, we're just going to put on tables here, it stays nice and warm here. In, when they're under the plastic, you water them twice a day to keep them moist, the seedlings. Yes. What do you do here in the hothouse? I uh, will have to water them more often now because it will evaporate much quicker. Yeah. So we'll see probably five times a day. Okay. We'll just see how it goes. So this is what you do after seven to ten days. The seedlings can go out. Yeah, they go out. But this is, as you can see, the, the shade cloth, the plastic on the top, has actually got cool shade on it. I spray cool shade all over it. So they, you know, they don't get the full sun. So it's um, quite a bit dimmed, but it's good for the seedlings. You know, you don't want to put the seedlings straight away in the full sun because, because it could burn the crap out of them, you know? Mm. So you don't want that. So now they'll be very good in here. They will love it here. Want you guys. Be good to daddy, huh? Eh? <laughs>